Yeah, well, just uh, welcome everybody. Great to have you with us. Excited to, uh, to show off uh, our new home, the Upper facility. Uh, new in some ways, not so much in, in others. Uh, thought I'd maybe just kind of level set here at the beginning, give you a, a few relevant statistics that I, I think you might find uh, to be of interest. Obviously, Alvin was first built in the late 1990s. Uh, it was the first standalone basketball facility of any, uh, any school in the country. Uh, and for a long time, we were the model. Uh, schools from across the country were flying in here to see what we had done with Oven. And as you travel around, I was down in Gainesville a couple of years ago. Their basketball facility looks shockingly like Oven used to. Uh, and so there are some, some replicas uh, around the country in different, on different campuses. Uh, but we knew as we, as we headed into this more recent time that uh, our needs had changed, uh, that, that players' needs had changed, that the program's needs had changed, staffing obviously had gotten bigger, uh, the technology around sports medicine, strength conditioning, recovery, nutrition, all those things had changed. And, and so it was a great opportunity for us to, uh, to bring a refresh to, to the oven space. Uh, a couple things that you'll notice today, we've moved out on all four sides. Uh, and so we've, we've moved uh, north, south, east, and west. Uh, we have changed the orientation of the building in, in two meaningful ways. One, you'll remember from how it was before, the parking lot's always been here to the south, but really the front door to oven was always on the north, which candidly never made a lot of sense to, to me and probably to almost anybody. Uh, so we have flipped that. Uh, we now, of course, are in the, the, the grand atrium here, a, a more uh, sense of arrival than, than we've had previously in oven. Uh, and then the second thing is that we flipped the sides of the building. So you recall the men uh, traditionally have been on the east side of the building. They now are on the west. Uh, the women are on the east. Uh, it is still a mirrored facility. And today we'll focus mostly on the west side, on the men's side, uh, really just because they're a, a little bit ahead in their construction. Uh, everything again is, is uh, mirrored. Um, but because if you'll recall throughout the construction, the women moved into State Farm Center, the men have stayed over on the east side kind of gave the west side a little bit of a, of a head start in some of the, the work that was being done here. Uh, and so they're still just a little bit ahead of, of the east side, uh, although we're catching up quickly now uh, with things that have happened over here. We did have, I know this was reported, we had a little bit of water damage uh, in the women's gym uh, about a month ago uh, during one of those, those major storms. We didn't have any of the main court down, but we did have some of the subfloor down. We ended up having to tear all that out, replace it. So that cost us about a month. Uh, so the women will actually just start using their gym. We're hoping, I think, on Friday, uh, tomorrow. Um, so they'll get into their actual gym space for the first time uh, as quickly as tomorrow. A couple other uh, key notes, I think. One, total cost. Again, this has been reported, $40 million. Uh, I asked for a few of the, the fundraising statistics before I came over here. We've now raised about $34 million uh, in support of this space. Uh, we've received, I believe it's over 11 gifts uh, of a million dollars or more, uh, and I believe another 12 gifts of between a half million and a million dollars. Total donors, I think we had 45 people make gifts of $25,000 or more in support of this facility. Uh, so hats off to Howard Milton uh, and our entire development crew, to the coaches who have been involved in that. Uh, it's really been a tremendous effort and, and really proud to be able to, to, uh, to have those kinds of, of numbers in support of, of this space. The largest single gift is $5 million. Um, so it's, it's been really a, a great effort to, uh, to and, and I expect we'll raise the rest. And we've said from the beginning, we ex intended to raise every dollar uh, and we still have that, that expectation, that goal. Uh, and so we're hopeful we'll be able to get that done in the not too distant future. Total square footage, the original building was 40,000 square feet. The building you'll see today is about 78,000 square feet. Uh, the two courts are, are now about a court and a half so those have each grown about 50%. Pretty much every other space, the locker room, the training room, the weight room, all the spaces you'll see are at least triple the size of what they were in the prior facility. Uh, and they are all in the top two or three in terms of size and scale of any facility in the country. And so we're really proud of, uh, of what we've been able to do here. So we'll start in, in uh, this space, again, kind of the grand entryway, place that uh, we, we lacked uh, in, in the original facility place to tell the story of Illinois basketball. Uh, obviously, this is an area that remains very much under construction. A nice large video board up here that we can use for a lot of different features. If you've been in the Smith Center, you'll see a lot of uh, similarities, uh, I think, in terms of the quality, some of the design elements here, as you've seen in Smith. Uh, they did have the same architect, H&TB, 
uh, has been a great partner of ours for a long time here. And so uh, there are there is some continuity between those spaces. Uh, obviously a little different scale here in terms of the number of student athletes, number of staff, um, but the large video board element will be nice. We'll have two really nice graphic elements here on, on each side. Uh, and then as visitors walk in, they'll have the opportunity to either go left in the men's coaches offices where we'll end up here today uh, or head to the right uh, in the women's offices uh, on the east side of the building. So what we'll do is we'll kind of head up here, uh, we'll walk through the women's gym, and that's probably the only women's space that we'll, the women's specific space that we'll focus on, uh, but we'll be in a number of the shared spaces as well. So again, here about 50% bigger uh, than the original courts. You all recall where the wall was originally. Uh, when you move out from there, uh, we gained about 50% there. We had some natural light elements, which of course we never had in the original building, being able to bring in some of the sunshine. Uh, we've got the new lighting throughout, throughout a lot of the, trying to feature the orange, the graphics, make it a more dynamic, fluid space. It's the newest floor technology. Uh, it's remarkable how quickly gym floor technology changes. Uh, this has got a new cushioning system uh, on the bottom of it that is now actually being replicated on the new court that we just installed in State Farm Center. Uh, but it, it helps alleviate some of the burden on the, the joints uh, of our athletes as they train here. All right, obviously this is uh, our sports medicine facility. And one of the things I, I probably should have mentioned at the outset, is, as you can tell, in some senses, we're still very much under construction. Uh, I think in a perfect world, we would have loved to have waited and, and brought you through in a few months once everything is, is perfectly finished. Uh, it, we're not there yet, but I think we also know that you're going to be in and out of this building a lot uh, over the next few months. And so rather than try and sort of keep the lid on it, uh, we wanted to make sure we, we gave you a chance to get through it. But know that there's clearly spaces that are, that are still a work in progress. Uh, if you remember the old building, this was essentially the original north wall. Right? So this was kind of the, the end of the original space. I'm sure you all recognize that stairwell. That was one of the, the remnants from the, the original space. Uh, but sports medicine space now, we've got all the traditional tables and, and treatment areas over here uh, on my left. Uh, we've got mirrored offices. Our, our women's basketball trainer, Autumn, is over there. Paul Schmidt, our men's trainer's office, is over here. Uh, and then as, as again, sports, technology, sports medicine technology has emerged, the, the new thing, and you saw this in the Smith Center as well, is there's a lot more time spent on your feet been on a table. Uh, and so it, as new sports medicine spaces have been developed, you're starting to see a lot of space for athletes to do rehab, be on their feet, uh, engage with different types of equipment, machineries we have over there behind you. Uh, and then also the hydrotherapy space. Uh, we've got in here hot and cold plunge and then the underwater treadmill, which helps with a lot of uh, injury rehabilitation, very similar to the Alter-G treadmill, which you'll, you'll see there behind you. Um, this space is a shared space, both men's and women's accessible by the doors on, on either end, uh, allows the athletes direct access from their locker rooms uh, so that they can get in here and, and get the work that they need either before or, uh, or after practice. Good, you good. Athletic director and Jane. That's right, more you can do. Just final on here. Room. Uh, kind of part of their players' compound back here. So again, mirrored on both sides. Uh, we've got the, the men's on this side, women's on the other, but they walk down this, this main corridor and then they can shoot off into their bathroom, shower space. This is their main changing area. Uh, and then here we'll head off to the, to the lounge. They can get direct access from here into the training room as well as into the weight room. Uh, and so it gives them kind of their own little cluster of, of spaces back here. And, uh, and I think you can see uh, kind of speaks for itself in terms of the space. I don't know, Coach, anything you want to add about this room? Well, this is uh, a significant, significant upgrade uh, from where we were at in the old one. The old one was very, very compact, uh, very, very small, uh, literally no room. We, ne we never at one point had any meetings in the other just for the simple ability to be seated uh, in the other one. So a uh, large upgrade, and as Josh mentioned, this is their space. Okay, this is, this is their domain. This is, uh, we feel it's important that they have their own space. Uh, the lockers are tremendous. It have a, has all the charging stations in it for, their, for all their devices. And yet, uh, you know, it's a place they can come in here and congregate and sit, very comfortable chairs. Uh, we didn't have those in the other place. We didn't have room for, for chairs 
Um, we, we completely, and I'll be very honest, completely avoided that, avoided that part of uh, the visit, uh, as, as we did uh, Paul Schmitz are in the training room. Uh, we locked that up in the old building. We never showed recruits that. So uh, now this is something we can be very proud of from the eye up on the ceiling to the graphics and uh, uh, the most important place, um, the most important thing to me is this is their place. This is their space. They know that they can come in here. Very, very few of us coaches are coming in here and this is kind of their, their domain. One thing that we really focused on, if you think back to when we went through Smith Center, is just the flow and functionality of the building. Uh, and again, I give a lot of credit to our architects, h and but as you go around the country, some of these spaces, you'll see that they have a lounge because they want to be able to say they have a lounge, but it's not anywhere close to where the players actually spend their time. And so the, the continuity and the, and, the, and the contiguous nature of all these spaces is very much intentional. Uh, because we want to make sure that each of these spaces is in, is in a position for the athletes to fully utilize it. So we'll head here. Really uh, comfortable space for our players. Uh, they'll use this for a lot of different things. There'll be a lot of naps taken on that couch. Uh, they'll play a lot of video games in here. We'll have some food in here on occasion. We have several different places throughout the building uh, to provide food to our student athletes. So you can see there's a little bit of a kitchenette in the back there. Um, but we'll have our primary nutrition station, which we'll show you here in a moment, and then also uh, a primary dining room upstairs. Uh, as, as time passes, we'll outfit this with some, some games, some of the things that you've seen uh, in Smith as well, you know, pool tables, ping pong tables, those kinds of things. Uh, but really a place for the athletes to get away, to relax. Uh, as Coach said, this is their space, uh, really the, their domain, their area for, for them to be completely at ease, uh, out of the public light, in a place where they can, they can really be amongst friends and, and be comfortable. And so this is, uh, uh, again, important for us to be right off the locker room uh, and, uh, and very accessible for the room. I, I want to touch on this room here, and as you can tell, this, this space is still very much under construction, but I, I think if you were to ask Coach Sean or Coach Brad, any of our strength coaches, our sports medicine staff, they would say that this space is going to be one of the things that differentiates this facility from a lot of the facilities around the country. Uh, this is going to be our recovery lounge, uh, recovery spa, depending on, on the name you want to use. Uh, it's interesting, when I was a student athlete, it, we were very much in the age of strength conditioning. Everybody was putting a lot of energy into building these great weight rooms. And, and then we moved from that into sports nutrition, uh, which again, we'll talk about here in a moment. Today, the real science is around recovery. Uh, people are starting to understand much better uh, how the body recovers, things that we can do proactively to create a better environment for the body to recover, to, to allow it to go out and work at a high level again. Um, so this will be a recovery lounge. It'll include a hyperbaric chamber, uh, a cryotherapy chamber. It'll have uh, an infrared sauna, uh, as well as zero gravity chairs and Normatec boots. There are some facilities, I think, around the country that may have one or, or, or two of those components. We're not aware of anybody that has all of those things in one place. And so we see that as a, as a major differentiating factor for us uh, in terms of providing the technology and the science for our student athletes to recover as efficiently as possible to allow them to go out and work at a very high level. I don't know, Sean or Brad, anything you guys want to add on the, on the recovery front? Well, I, I think the one thing that is Josh mentioned, I'll just add in the recovery piece, you know, we, we, we talk about development all the time and we talk about hard work all the time. So kind of our motto is, 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 is work hard, recover harder. And, and recovery is now a part of a workout. We constitute it as that. So, for guys to have the ability to go, uh, to go do that and do it under supervision that is is under our umbrella, is is huge. And uh, uh, you throw that with the with the cold tanks or the cold tub, the hot tub, and all those things over there, uh, top shelf. We're at, we're at the there's no, there's nothing better in the country than than what we're going to have here. So again, another place right off the player lounges and the locker rooms where guys are got it right at their disposal. This is really one of the postcard spaces in the building, if you were to ask me. Of course, I'm an old meathead, so I like I like good things. A couple things about uh, this space. Uh, again, we've got the masked offices, Adam Fletcher here, Kylie Fletcher uh, at the other end, 
We asked them if they wanted to have an office together. They said they wanted a little space. <laughs> which I understand. Uh, so we, uh, we we gave them that. Uh, but a couple things you'll notice. Uh, one, if you think about the weight rooms that we all grew up around, remember these racks and racks of dumbbells, right? Just a whole wall full of dumbbells. Today's technology is different. Now we have uh, these power blocks uh, on these racks. Uh, that you can selectorize how much you want the dumbbells to hold. You can take one of these racks to each one of these uh, these platforms, and so basically you can establish a workout station for groups, and they never have to move from the station. They don't have to move around the room except to use perhaps some of the bigger pieces of equipment. But once they're on the platform, they're set. Uh, you can take a look at the racks as we walk through here. Uh, all kinds of different attachments now that allow for different multi-joint movements. Uh, I think it'd be uh, a lot of it I don't even know how to use, um, but it's pretty impressive. Looks like an erector set. A lot of bells and whistles there that you can choose from. One of the biggest changes are the inlaid platforms. So when I first started lifting weights, Olympic platforms were above ground, they were wood, uh, and they, they constricted, right? The only thing you could do on the platform was use the platform. Uh, but now with them being inlaid in the ground, it opens up the floor surface uh, to allow for lots of different uh, pre-workout uh, warm-ups or, or different kinds of activities on that floor. It doesn't disrupt the, the floor in that way. And then probably one of the more interesting features of the room, down at the opposite end, uh, you'll see down there the block I, that's a, a gymnastic spring floor uh, that's been built into the rubber floor. Uh, our strength coaches believe in doing a lot of body movements. Uh, and this gives our athletes a, a softer, more forgiving place to, to engage in some of those, uh, those techniques, those training mechanisms. So as you get down there, as you step onto that, you'll feel the springiness and, and understand what we're, what we're talking about. Uh, but great technology throughout here, obviously great sound system, great view, uh, just a, a really uh, energetic space for our athletes to come in and obviously this has been a, a central part of our success and uh, we expect that to continue. We want to make sure we, they have a space befitting of, uh, of what happens in, in this room. Here, uh, this is the primary nutrition center. A uh, lot of different things here than, than what we had before. As you can tell we've got the, the coolers here. Those are actually walk-in coolers, so we've got a lot of storage in this building that we didn't have in, in the prior space. If you remember the old oven, this corridor became a primary storage facility. We had a lot of gear and equipment and different. You know, we had the toss backs and all kinds of things were, were stored in these hallways. We obviously we've created spaces now to house a lot of that equipment. The old spine which is right up that, that doorway over there, used to house the, the training room and the weight room, uh, now has primarily equipment and storage. Uh, and so um, there, there is a, an opportunity for high density storage back there. We've got more laundry. Uh, and then sports nutrition, uh, we've got our, our full-time nutritionist has an office here. He's got a food preparation area back behind this door. We've got cold storage with walk-in delivery behind that. And every day when our players come off the floor, They'll have shakes, they'll have supplements, they'll have different things that have been prepared for each of them individually. Every one of our student athletes has a, a nutrition plan that's been tailored to their own needs. Uh, and uh, it's just, this is a really great opportunity. And then throughout the day, as they're here, obviously they don't have to get permission. They, they don't have to pay for it. They can walk up and grab uh, whatever they need to, to, to do to make sure they're maintaining their preferred um, body composition and, and getting enough calories in to replace what they've been putting out over the course of the day. So, At some point, one one team or the other is not practicing, and they want to try and use both courts. They can. For some of you uh, down at the the south end, there's actually a pass through that goes from one gym to the other. Uh, that's that's one location where you can can move if, if one team's not practicing and they may have an interest in trying to actually utilize both floors. Creates that access point. Uh, again, we've got that storage in the middle. Um, and, and talk again about the, the floor technology, the, the, uh, the surface underneath the wood. The, the biggest difference is obviously, as, as Shauna mentioned, the, the space. But the other thing is now the storage. 
uh, storage has always been a major problem at Oven. Uh, you walk through the halls, you don't see the bags laying in the halls. Um, and now we've got all of our equipment, our guns, um, rebounding machines, whatever those things are, we can put those away. And we don't have to worry about a guy sliding out of bounds and sliding into one of the guns and, and, and doing all that. So the, the storage is a big piece of that. Uh, also, the technology with the cameras uh, to, to be able to do that. We can come down around the corner here. We've got a big screen TV so that we watch film. Just hook it up to a computer. We can watch film. Okay, here's the play we're getting ready to run. Boom, here it is. Here's what it looks like. Come back, pull them over, no, this is what we did, here you are, boom, and we have all the access to, to that piece of it. Obviously, we can blow the glass out of this place. If you, you hook the music up, which Sky likes to do, and, uh, and play it really loud, uh, which they enjoy. When they come in at, at midnight, and they have their thumb fingerprint access to the building, and they're in here, uh, they have 24 hour access. They just plug their phone in and, and, and they're good to go. But the, the thing I love the most is obviously the space on the court, but the storage so that we can not have to worry about guys literally getting, getting hurt because they run into equipment on the court. The original, this was the women's basketball coaches' offices. Obviously, it's been reconfigured, uh, changed around a bit. Uh, but this is now kind of a multi-purpose space. Uh, we have kind of a formal dining room for the team. Uh, so the, the guys, for example, they'll come up here after every morning practice. They'll have breakfast up here. It gives them a chance to, to hang out or relax, uh, get a good meal in after their workout before they head off to class. Uh, and then this really doubles as their, their primary team meeting space. If they're going to do film study, game prep, uh, gives them some comfortable chairs, a uh, place where that can happen. Uh, selfishly, this will be great for us as we have different functions. Uh, if we want to have a, a donor event, for example, uh, related to a practice, this gives us a nice entertainment space uh, where we can have guests for the program and, and uh, welcome people to be up here. Uh, so just kind of a nice uh, multi-use space, uh, serves a lot of different purposes. Next door, we probably won't head over there, it's a little congested, uh, but some of the old coaches offices are still on the other side of this wall. Those will become some supplemental spaces, we'll have a couple uh, support staff members with offices back there. We'll have academic space back there. It looks almost like it did, except you know, refreshed. Right now, it's still being used as an office by our, our construction staff. Um, but that'll be one of the final pieces to the entire building. It's finalized, and uh, and we'll give them a nice uh, a nice hub with some of our academic support. Uh, Before we head into the offices, we won't stop kind of at each door along the way. Uh, but as I mentioned at the outset, and one of the biggest changes has just been the number of people directly working with our basketball programs. And so in the old space, we had staff laying on top of each other. And ultimately, they had to move out in the hallway to have staff meetings. It just wasn't very functional. Uh, so what you see as we go around the corner, we now have larger rooms for our video operation, our graduate assistants, our student managers, uh, the offices all along the, the south wall are for our, more of our full-time staff, our coaches, uh, our, our direct support staff to Coach Underwood. You'll see a kitchenette uh, that provides them a little bit more of a, a comfort space. Uh, at the end of the hallway, there will be a, a conference room, uh, which they've never had before, a chance for them to get the whole group together. And then we'll, we'll end up in Coach Underwood's office and we'll gather there and talk a little bit more about that space. But just as you walk down the hall, those are generally the things you'll see. Uh, and again, exactly the same as what you'll see on the, on the women's side. So I don't know if the coaches have anything to add for the, the staff office space. Yeah, this is, this is big time and, and so needed. Uh, you know, the kind of the running joke I, I always just tell Josh is anytime I need to make a personal call, I walked outside and set my car in the parking lot. And we had uh, managers on managers right across my door um, and we had no meeting space. We had no place whatsoever to meet. It was about one kid, player watching film in your office at a time. Uh, it was it was it was it was in much much overdue is what is what we've got here. And uh, but these are these make you feel comfortable, not eager to leave, not eager to get out, and and be able to you know go to the refrigerator and get a water and, and 
you know, or a cup of coffee, and and it, it's it's uh, these, these are these are phenomenal. We did a great job. With these. Sean, how's it been for you guys? Yeah, yeah, obviously I don't know what the past was like here, but I just know to have the space to have, the, like Coach said, to, to be comfortable. We're here literally hours and hours and hours and hours. So I said I'm not going to want to go home. Like, it, it, I mean, our offices are nice enough to just stay in here and we don't literally have to go home. But uh, our conference room, we have a huge staff, just like they have a huge staff. We can all be able to sit around the table and have meetings, enough uh, area for our players to come in. Our players, you know, and his players, I've been in their office and their guys are, you know, laying on the floor and watching film. And we need that space in order to have the, the cultures that we both want and to build those relationships, build a watch film with our players. Um, so just the space and, and the, just being comfortable, you know, uh, for us has been, has been huge. As we did travel around and, and look, again, not just in, in basketball, but in football as well, we wanted to make sure we had a premier space for the coaches to work. They spent an extraordinary amount of time here. Uh, it was important to us to, to have a comfortable space for them, a functional space. And so you see in both, both offices, they have kind of their own work in, environment where they can watch film, uh, make recruiting calls, increasingly a lot of Zoom calls. Uh, but then also a more social space that they can use for meetings with players, with recruits, with their families. Uh, and, and that's, of course, the area over here. They each have private bathrooms, really nice changing areas. Uh, gives them an opportunity to, again, when the doors close, relax, uh, get some privacy and get, get some good work done. And, and we did see a lot of interesting uh, models uh, around the country. But this, these spaces, both in Smith Center and now here in Oven, have been real focal points in terms of our conversations with uh, with the architects. Brett, I was, they were asking what, 95 inch TVs? 98. 98 inch TVs. <laughs> and I think we heard what, how many tall TVs in the building? 55? 54 TVs in this building. 54 TVs. Not all 98 inches, but <clears throat> no more. So, so the importance of this area and, and I'm really, really big on the comfort of meeting with a recruit and the family type atmosphere that you have. Um, most of the time we were renting a place at the I Hotel to have closing meetings with where you could show video um, and, and just have a relaxed atmosphere where you can talk with a recruit. And, and one of the things that uh, this will provide us all of that that comfort and that ability to sit in some nice furniture uh, have those have those those intimate meetings that you need with with recruits and their families and their people and and, uh, and be able to do it in a space that's ours and so it really excited really excited about that and and obviously uh, some work still to be done and some trophies still to put in here with um, but uh, yeah, this is this is this is pretty good, pretty good.